This diagram gives some examples of sketching complete Nyquist diagrams as a mapping of the decontour. So the previous video introduced the decontour and the concept that the Nyquist diagram is simply a mapping of the decontour. And it also demonstrated a number of properties that come with this. What we want to do now is to consolidate that by giving a number of numerical examples of sketching Nyquist diagrams using the decontour and its properties. And you remember some of the things we're interested in. Symmetry for positive and negative frequencies about the real axis. Right hand turns as omega tends to zero for integrators. And 180 degree clockwise rotation uh, around omega equals zero for integrators. So first example, sketch the Nyquist diagram for the G of S given here. And what we've done to make life easy for you is we've given you the Bode diagrams so you can get an idea of what's going on. Now, if you look, you'll see this system has got good gain at low frequencies and then the gain rolls off to become very small. The other thing you'll notice is the phase. The phase starts in quadrant four between naught and minus 90 degrees. Then it goes to quadrant three then it goes to quadrant two and comes back to minus 180 degrees asymptotically. Now the other thing you might notice which is quite interesting is what's the gain where the phase is minus 180 degrees. So minus 180 degrees is here and if I go up and look at the gain you'll see the gain is above zero decibels so it's greater than one. So let's use those observations and put in our Nyquist diagram. So here it is. So you'll see it starts on the positive real axis, but going into quadrant four. The phase comes round in a clockwise direction. We cross the negative real axis, but where we cross, you'll see the gain is slightly bigger than one. And then we come into the origin um, again in the minus 180 degree direction. Now our job here is to complete the Nyquist diagram. So the first thing to do is to put in the mirror image. Now I'm going to do this very crudely because it's just a sketch. Oh, I didn't do that very well there, but you understand uh, perhaps perhaps I better delete that and try a bit harder. That's what happens when you try and sketch on a screen. You do tend to make things a bit messy. Okay, now there's the mirror image. It's important I put in the direction of increasing frequency. So you'll see I've put in the arrows which correspond to going around the decontour. And now I've finished. Next example, g equals 2s plus 20 over s minus 1 times s plus 1 squared. And again, you'll see we've given you the Bode diagram so you can pick out the key facets. But I'm going to go straight here to the Nyquist diagram. So here it is. You'll see, again, if I put in arrows of increasing frequency, you'll see it starts at minus 20 and it finishes at the origin. In fact, it approaches the origin along the negative real axis, even though that's not obvious because you'd have to blow up around the origin to see that. The key thing here is to complete the diagram. So in this case, that just means put in the mirror image and add your arrows. And now we've got a complete Nyquist diagram. The next one, 4 over s plus 1, s plus 2, s plus 3. So again, you're given the Bode diagrams in case you want to do this yourself a bit more slowly and do the sketch first. But here's the Nyquist diagram. So it starts on the positive real axis, goes around in a clockwise direction, finishes on the positive imaginary axis. So again, mark the direction of flow of increasing frequency, the way you would go along the decontour, and then, as before, add in your mirror image, okay, your symmetry, and again, mark the direction of increasing frequency. And that's all you have to do. So you'll see where there's no integrators, this really is quite straightforward. You're just putting the mirror image in. One last example then with no integrators. And you'll see we've not bothered with Bode here. We've given the diagram straight away. So we mark the direction of increasing frequency. You can see they always finish at the origin, so it should be fairly obvious what's going on. And then I can put in my mirror image like this. So again, you'll see completing the Nyquist diagram is very straightforward when there are no integrators. So what next then? We want to give, um, what have we done? We've given the Nyquist diagram associated to positive frequencies, which is what we did in the first um, series of videos where we looked at sketching. And then we completed them, the Nyquist diagram, simply by doing the mirror image. Now, when we add in 
integrators, there are a few things that we need to be a lot more careful with. We really do need to mark the direction of increasing frequency, otherwise we could make a silly mistake, in particular because we're going to have to add some right-hand turns, and in order to get the right-hand turns, we need to know which direction we're going. And we're also going to need to consider these 180 degrees clockwise rotations for each integrator. So we'll do a few examples and hopefully it will become clear. So here's example one. g of s equals 3 of s, s squared plus 2s plus 2. So again you'll see we've given the Nyquist diagram for the positive frequencies, which is what you'd be able to do from the sketching rules that we gave you in the first few videos. So now let's mark the direction of increasing frequency. So the next job was to put in the mirror image to give ourselves the symmetry. So there we go. So again, mark the arrows to show increasing frequency. And now what we need is to add the right hand turn. So you remember in the direction of the arrows, you turn right. So hopefully that's clear. I followed the arrows, I've turned right. And then what do we get? We get a 180 degree clockwise rotation at infinity. That's going to take it all the way around here. Now remember, this line, I'm going to write it here, this line is symbolic. Okay, essentially you're going around the right half plane. Okay, because you remember you're at an infinite radius, okay, and you've got to do 180 degrees clockwise rotation. So if you look at how we've got from this point up here, to this point, oops, this we didn't uh, we didn't want to do that. To this point down, it's, uh, pen's given up. To this point right down here, you'll see we did 180 degrees clockwise rotation, and we also included our right hand turns, which is what we wanted. You'll see again um, around this bit down here. You'll see we did indeed turn to the right if you put the direction of flow on. Here's another example then. g of s equals 3 of s, s plus 2. So the same strategy, I'll put in my direction of increasing frequency. I do my mirror image. My sketching might not be perfect, but you get the point. I add in my right hand turn. There it is. I get a 180 degree rotation, okay, at infinity. And then I get another right hand turn down here. And there's your complete plot. And again, you'll see it's enclosed the right half plane. And that's going to be quite important later that you notice this Nyquist diagram is fully enclosed the right half plane. What about this one then? So again, let's mark the directions of increasing frequency. There we have it. Let's do our mirror image. Down like that again, mark my arrows. Now, you have to be careful here turn right. So when I turn right, I go like this. Again, I do my 180 degree rotation. Okay, and then you'll see there's a right hand turn at the top there. And in this particular case, you've enclosed the left half plane by having your 180 degrees. And the key thing is you'll notice it's clockwise. That's what we said it had to be. The rotation had to be clockwise. Oh, I didn't mark that um, right angle. Apologies, there we go. Now, this example has got two integrators. How's that going to change things? So I'll do the red one first. So here's the red one, if um, anyone can't quite notice, coming in like this. Let's mark the arrows of increasing frequency. Let's mark the mirror image. There it is. Now, first of all, you have to turn right. So if I turn right, it's going to do that. But you'll notice I've got two integrators. There we are. So I get 180 degrees for each. So that means in total I get 360 degrees. So what I'm going to get, and again, please take this diagram as being symbolic. If you see this dotted red line I'm going around, we go all the way around and then come back here. So you'll see I've gone round in total 360 degrees to get back to join the other plot with these right-hand turns. So that's quite important. Remember, you get the right-hand turns in the right sense, and you get the rotation, which again you'll see was clockwise. What about the green plot? Now, I'll do that one in blue for this one here. Here it is. And again, if you do the mirror image, so I'll mark the direction, do the mirror image, it goes out there. 
Now again, we get the right hand turns. Here we go. There's a right hand turn. We do this symbolic thing around infinity and come round like this. And you notice there is a subtle difference between the blue and the red, but we're going to get to that after we've done the Nyquist stability criteria. The most important thing here is that you get the right hand turns um, the right way and you do the clockwise rotation and then you won't make silly mistakes. So conclusions. We've demonstrated that a Given the part of the Nyquist diagram corresponding to positive frequencies, then completing the parts of the diagram corresponding to the rest of the decontour is straightforward. Okay? It's important you recognize the overall diagram is closed, and we've used key properties such as symmetry about the real axis, um, two right-hand right-angle turns corresponding to omega going to zero for systems with integrators and 180 degrees clockwise rotation as omega goes from 0 minus 0 plus and the key thing is here for each integrator in the system.